uh, today our topic is about nervous system. Okay, coming to the functions of the nervous system. Actually, the nervous system is very important system in our body. The whole controlling mechanism of our body will lies in only two systems. One is nervous system. Other one is hormonal system, endocrine system. So nervous system will control our body with electrical stimulus. And endocrine system will control our body through hormones. So these two are the separate systems which usually control our body. It control everything from our body, but the way of controlling was different. And it, uh, the nervous system will receive the sensory input. According to the sensory input, we take the decisions and our body will respond. Sometimes the decisions will be taken by ourselves, uh, uh, which is voluntary. Sometimes the decisions will be taken up by the body itself, which we call it as involuntary. So coming to the organs of nervous system, so brain, spinal cord and nerves. So these we call it as the organs of the nervous system. Brain and spinal cord will come under the central nervous system. Nerves will come under the peripheral nervous system. Other than the brain and spinal cord, we call it as peripheral nervous system. So in this picture you can able to see we have the brain, spinal cord and remaining all will come under the peripheral nervous system. So coming to the combining forms, cephalo. Cephalo means head. Next, cerebello, which means cerebellum. Cerebro means cerebrum. Encephalo is brain. And glio, glio, which means glue. So glue means pasting. Medullo, which means medulla. Meningeo, which means meninges. So meninges are nothing but the covering of the brain and spinal cord. And milo, milo is the spinal cord. Neuro, neuro is nerves. Faso means speech. And polio, which means gray matter. So polio myelitis. So polio means gray matter. Myelitis means inflammation of the spinal cord. So the gray matter of the spinal cord will get inflammation. That we call it as polio myelitis. And coming to the next ponto, which means pons. Radiculo. Radiculo means nerve root and thalamo means thalamus. Thico is sheet. Sheet we also call it as meninges. Ventriculo is we call it as ventricle. So the inner part of the brain, if you cut the brain, we have the spaces inside the brain. We call that spaces as ventricles. Coming to the suffixes, algesia. Algesia means pain or sensitivity. So, analgesia means absence of pain or sensitivity. Esthesia means feeling or sensation. Anesthesia means feeling. Uh, so, anesthesia means lack of feeling and sensation. Peresis, which means weakness. Phasia is speech. And plegia means paralysis. Taxia, which means muscle coordination. For example, ataxia means absence of muscle coordination. So coming to the anatomy and physiology. So all the body will get coordinated by the uh, brain and spinal cord. So all the activities of our body. It receives the information from both external receptors and internal receptors. For example, the external receptors are receptors for vision, receptor for smell, Receptors for taste and receptors for touch, temperature, so pressure, pain. All these things we call it as receptors. We receive the information. That information will go to the brain for processing. And finally, we react with the help of muscles and glands. So the whole nervous system we divided into two parts. Basically, it was two parts. One is central nervous system and other one is peripheral nervous system. First one, central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system, cranial nerves and spinal nerves. So the nervous system was divided into two parts. One is neurons and the other one is neuroglial cells. Neurons. Neurons are the individual nerve cells 
which is capable of conducting the electrical impulse and coming to the next thing so the neurons are divided into three parts so dendrites which are highly branched and projections that receive the impulses i'll show you in the picture so this was the basic plot with the neuron so this we call it as cell body cyton or perikaryon and this part we call it as axon hillock this is axon hillock and this as the myelin sheet so for some neurons we don't have the myelin sheet those neurons we call it as unmyelinated neurons whatever the neurons we have the myelin sheet we call it as myelinated neurons so this neuron is the myelinated neuron and this we call it as nodes of ranvier so this is nodes of ranvier and the space between the node to the node we call it as internode and these are the dendrites these are like tree branches that's why they named it as dendrites and you can see here and this is the nerve terminal so this nerve terminal will form the connection with the dendrites of other neuron so likewise it will get continue and here we have the nucleus so once again dendrites cell body so this we call it as nucleus and this is axon and this is myelin sheet nodes of ranvier and so inside this we have a cell we call this as squamous cell so for every myelin sheet we have a squamous cell and these are the nerve terminals we call it as these are the parts of the neuron so this was the actual picture of the neurons so they injected the dye into the body and they taken an x ray so with the dye we can able to see the neurons so this is the neuron this is the neuron and this is actually the cell body and this is the nucleus and these are the dendrites and nerve tissue so the nerve tissue uh, was being joined together so one neuron and the other neuron will meet at a point we call that point as synapse so the synapse uh, so the synapse is actually the meeting point of the two neurons and the space between usually there is no physical connection between the neurons there will be always the gap so that gap we call it as synaptic cleft so the, uh, in that gap the message was transferred from one neuron to the other neuron so with the help of neurotransmitter so we call that substance as neurotransmitter so usually that substance is acetylcholine and neuroglial cells so ne the neuroglial cells are the other type of cells which usually helps for supporting the neurons so the myelin sheet was formed by squamous cells the squamous cells are the one of the supporting cells of the neurons so and also the neuroglial cells cannot conduct any electricity only the neurons are the conducting things of the electricity the, the neuroglial cells will not conduct so the whole nervous system has two types of cells one is neurons and other one is the supporting cells which we call it as neuroglial cells so next central nervous system so the central nervous system means brain and spinal cord so the brain will have a functions called it receives the impulses from all over the body and it process this information and respond to the action the same basic plot will be very similar so if we receive the sensory input we actually will process the sensation and we react according to that so the bundles of nerve fibers will be interconnecting the different parts of cns are their tracks so the central nervous system consists of two things one is gray matter and other one is white matter in the gray matter we have only the cell bodies and dendrites in the white matter we have the axons okay why it is white because of the myelin sheet so myelin sheet is actually the fatty covering so it is white because of the myelin sheet only and the remaining parts of the neurons will form the gray matter so this is the brain and here we have the spinal cord so this is the cerebrum so from here to here this is the whole thing we call it as cerebrum this is cerebellum and this is diencephalon and this is brain stem so in the brain stem we have midbrain pons medulla oblongata 
so these are the three parts together we call it as brain stem so mid brain pons medulla oblongata and this part is the cerebrum here we have the cerebellum and this part is the diencephalon so out of this we also call the cerebellum as the little brain or the small brain so you can see in this picture again with labeling this is cerebrum and uh, here we have the thalamus and hypothalamus thalamus and hypothalamus together will form the diencephalon and coming to the brain stem mid brain pons medulla oblongata and this we call it as the pituitary gland so this is the pituitary gland and coming to the cerebrum so this is the largest portion of the brain and it was present in the upper portion so the major thoughts reasoning judgment memory association skills ability to discriminate between the items everything will lies in the cerebrum only the higher functions a higher thinking and cognitive skills we call it as like reasoning problem solving judgment memory and our everything thinking capacity everything will lies in the cerebrum only cerebrum has a uh, cerebral cortex which forms the outer layer of the cerebrum which is composed of folds of the gray matter so we have two things one is gyri and sulci i'll show you in the picture what is gyri this we call it as gyri this elevations we call it as gyri gyri are the elevations and the depressions we call it as sulci so elevations are the gyri and the depressions are the sulci coming to the lobes of cerebrum so we subdivided the right and left half of the cerebral hemisphere into four lobes so we have the uh, so this coming to this part so this part so this is the frontal lobe and this is the parietal lobe so we have the frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe and temporal lobe these are the four lobes present in the cerebrum okay frontal lobe is for personality speech movement and parietal lobe is for sensation language area and occipital lobe is for vision and temporal lobe is actually for hearing and smell and next we have this part we call it as cerebellum cerebellum is actually for balance and coordination okay and next here we have this pons medulla and the spinal cord medulla oblongata will continue as spinal cord and once again the frontal lobe is for personality speech and movement and the sen and the parietal lobe is for sensation language area occipital lobe is for vision and temporal lobe is for hearing and smell and cerebellum is for balance and coordination and next we have the brain stem pons medulla oblongata and the spinal cord so next diencephalon diencephalon so here we have the diencephalon so diencephalon is present in the below the cerebrum it has two parts one is thalamus and other one is hypothalamus so thalamus we call it as sensory relay station so what is sensory relay station means all the sensations will come and stay in the thalamus from there it will go to their respective areas so like for example if we have a junction all the trains will come to the junction and from there it will go to their uh, respective stations likewise only all the sensations will come and stop at the thalamus and from there it will go to the respective areas hypothalamus hypothalamus is very very important part that actually will control the temperature appetite appetite means hunger sleep sexual desires and emotions so it also controls the autonomic nervous system we also call it as automatic nervous system usually automatic nervous system will control all the internal organs such as cardiovascular system gastrointestinal system and release of hormones from the pituitary gland and cerebellum which is the second largest portion of the brain which is located on the back side of the brain actually 
so it controls the voluntary body actions and also maintaining the balance and equilibrium and it also refines the muscular <laughs> movements in the cerebrum and next part is brain stem so this part we call it as brain stem here we have the midbrain pons and medulla oblongata and what is the midbrain is actually the junction between the cerebrum and the spinal cord so that was the midbrain and pons the meaning of pons is bridge so that connects the cerebellum with the rest of the brain medulla oblongata which is the base of the brain that actually will connects the brain to the spinal cord and brain ventricles brain ventricles are actually the spaces inside the brain we call it as ventricles inside that spaces we have the csf csf means cerebrospinal fluid which is actually the water like fluid which provides the shock absorption for the brain brain and spinal cord so we have the brain ventricles in the cerebrum thalamus and cerebellum in these areas we have the spaces and next the spinal cord so the medulla from the medulla oblongata till the second lumbar vertebra so sorry till here from the medulla oblongata till the second lumbar vertebra the spinal cord will get extended and totally we have 33 vertebra from here to here we have 33 vertebra and the spinal cord will be till the second lumbar vertebra only so this is nerves actually nerves coming from the spinal cord and it lines up the canal and it contains the spinal cavity and vertebral canal also and this part we call it as uh, cervical cervical nerves so this part is the cervical region cervical means neck region and this part we call it as the thoracic region thoracic region means upper chest yeah there Uh, next this part we call it as the lumbar region so lumbar means lower back and this part we call it as the sacral region and this part is the coccygeal region so total we have 31 pairs of spinal nerves so out of this 31 pairs of spinal nerves cranial nerves are seven uh, seven sorry eight pairs of cranial nerves are there 12 pairs of thoracic nerves are there five pairs of lumbar nerves five pairs of sacral nerves and one pair of coccygeal nerve so totally we have 31 pairs of spinal nerves so coming to the cerebrospinal so this sorry spinal cord spinal cord is actually protected by the csf csf means cerebrospinal fluid obviously the brain will have the the brain will have the outer gray matter and inner white matter and the spinal cord will have inner gray matter and outer white matter vice versa will be there for spinal cord and the brain so the brain will have outer gray matter and inner white matter and the spinal cord will have inner gray matter and outer white matter so what and all the nerves which will be going towards the brain we call it as ascending tracks what and all the nerves which will be coming away from the brain we call that as descending tracks and meninges meninges are actually the protective coverings of the brain so this is the brain this is the gray matter of the brain and this is the white matter of the brain and from here the brain is covered by three layers so one is so this layer we call it as pia matter so pia matter means very thin layer and this layer we call just and this layer we call it as arachnoid matter arachnoid means it looks like a spider web okay and next we have the dura matter so dura means very thicker so pia matter arachnoid matter and dura matter all the three layers will be present will be present on the brain you can remain very simply as pad pad so pia matter arachnoid matter and dura matter and the space between the uh, pia matter and the arachnoid matter we call it as subarachnoid space okay you can see here so this is the skin so this is the skin and this is the fat layer 
and this is the bone of the skull and here we have epidural space means the space present above the dura mater and this is the dura mater and this is the subdural space the space present below, below the dura mater and next we have this arachnoid mater here and the space below the arachnoid matter we call it as subarachnoid space sub means below epi means above and next uh, this is the pia matter so pia matter means thin layer and next this is the brain in the brain this is the gray matter and this is the white matter and next coming to the peripheral nervous system what and all the nerves coming out of the brain and spinal cord we call it as peripheral nervous system so totally we have from the brain we have 12 pairs of cranial nerves and from the spinal cord we have 31 pairs of spinal nerves so cranial nerves arise from the brain and spinal nerves will come from the spinal cord so we have a pair one from the right and one from the left so nerves nerves will actually comes out of the uh, central nervous system which carries the messages to the brain and from the brain so nerve root the point at which the nerves will come out that point we call it as nerve root so nerves usually named based on the organs to the if they supply to the particular organ so they will refer to the to that name so coming to the cranial nerves we have 12 pairs of cranial nerves for the whole 12 pairs of cranial nerves we have 12 names so the first cranial nerve so we denote the cranial nerve with the help of roman number this roman number will be denotes the cranial nerves so the first cranial nerve is the olfactory olfactory means sense of the smell so olfaction means smell and the second cranial nerve is optic optic means sense of sight and the third cranial this is actually three it was the typing mistake three third cranial nerve is oculomotor which controls the movement of the eyeball and so the third fourth and sixth these are the three nerves will control the eyeball movements okay oculomotor trochlear and abducens okay so first if you see the words will be very uh, will be not familiar to you if you go if you read again and again you will get familiar and the fifth cranial nerve we call it as trigeminal nerve which actually controls the facial yeah. sensation and yeah, controls the <laughs> muscles of chewing so while mastic we call it as muscles of mastication and the seventh cranial nerve is facial nerve which actually controls the overall facial muscles ex muscles of expression salivation and taste of the two third of the tongue so front two third of the tongue is controlled by facial nerve and the next eighth cranial nerve is vestibular cochlear nerve so vestibular part is for maintaining the equilibrium cochlear part is for hearing and next uh, the ninth cranial nerve is glossopharyngeal nerve so glosso means tongue so it will supplies to the posterior and back one third of the tongue and also the pharynx so that's why they named it as glossopharyngeal and the 10th cranial nerve is the vagus so the vagus so the vagus nerve will supply to the abdominal and thoracic cavities means the cardiovascular system gastrointestinal system and respiratory system is actually supplied by the vagus nerve and the 11th cranial nerve is the accessory nerve it 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 controls the neck and the shoulder muscles and the 12th cranial nerve is the hypoglossal so the hypoglossal will controls the tongue muscles hypoglossal hypo means below glossal means tongue so below the tongue we have the muscle so that's why it controls the tongue muscles these are the 12 cranial nerves which are very very important you have to know if they, anyone ask you what is the seventh cranial nerve we have to tell the fa facial what is the fifth cranial nerve trigeminal likewise you have to practice the cranial nerves cranial nerves are very very important under the nervous system and coming to the next thing neuron so we already have seen nerve is the one which carry the information from to and fro to the brain so and but any individual nerve can carry the information only in one direction so we have two types of uh, neurons we call 
first neuron is afferent neuron afferent neuron means which carry the information towards the brain so sensory neurons all the sensory neurons are afferent neurons and efferent neuron means which carry the information away from the brain so we call that as motor neurons and coming to the final division so the peripheral nervous system is divided into two divisions one is autonomic nervous system and other one is somatic nervous system so what is autonomic nervous system is autonomic nervous system we also call it as automatic nervous system which actually controls the body by its own we we don't have any control on the autonomic nervous system so all the internal organs heart lungs liver stomach intestines so all the internal organs are controlled by autonomic nervous system so autonomic nervous system has two types one is sympathetic branch and other one is parasympathetic branch first one sympathetic sympathetic nervous system means so we have two situations in our life one is when we are in hyper excited situations when we are very happy very uh, like when we are very happy or very sad or when we are uh, in a very exciting fear all the situations we call it as hyper excited situations during these situations our heart rate will get increased our respiration will get increased our temperature will get increases everything will get increases except the digestion so for example one hour before your examination you won't feel hunger so because of the activation of the sympathetic nervous system so that was the work everything it will get elevated except the digestion and parasympathetic nervous system so which was quite opposite to the sympathetic nervous system so which will counter balance so this situation is when we are resting or when you are very calm during that situation the parasympathetic nervous system will get activates it will usually lowers the heart rate lowers the blood pressure and lowers everything it will lowers except the digestion it will stimulate the digestion we always we feel hunger when we are very calm we want to eat something more when we are very calm and subtle so during that time the parasympathetic nervous system will play a key role so somatic nervous system somatic nervous system is which in which is under our control which which supplies to the skin and skeletal muscles we can control our touch temperature pressure and pain and also the motor commands also will supply to the skeletal muscles which will be under our control okay okay uh, could you please uh, disconnect and reconnect again